Yeah, I know, red shirt, red bag. It's a lot of red, but red is the color of anger. But good news, it's over now. So there that is. <laughs> Resident Evil, the final chapter. Bye bye so Resident Evil, the final chapter, or as the poster calls it, is the supposed final chapter in the Resident Evil movie franchise, which is great news because now they can reboot it in a completely justified reboot, in which case they can actually follow the story from the games and it might actually be good. That or just play the games, let the movies die. Point is now Alice is back and she has to do stuff and stop Umbrella again. I say it like that because for a large chunk of this movie, I was sitting there like, why is anything happening? Granted, the movie is self-aware and the fact that the audience really doesn't know why any of this is happening because they fill in the audience like, hey, by the way, here's what's happened, this is what happened before, and now here's where we are. And even what happened before isn't actually in line with what happened before, from what I remember. I say from what I remember in my disclaimer, the fact that I've seen the Resident Evil movies once in theaters each, so I might be remembering it wrong, but from what I can recall in the second Resident Evil movie, Jared Harris's character was the one who created the T-Virus, and the Red Queen, which was the AI robot in the hive was modeled after his daughter, right? In this one, it tells us it's a completely different guy who made the T-Virus, and that guy's daughter is what the Red Queen is modeled after. It was really confusing. If there are Resident Evil movie fans out there who completely just watch these movies all the time and know the Lord, please clear it up for me because I'm trying to remember a movie that I saw like 13 years ago once. The movie is just a series of action sequences. It's like, all right, action sequence. Then Alice gets knocked out, and now she's in a completely different scenario, and then action sequence. She gets knocked out again, now she's in a completely different scenario. This is how you transport people in movies, I guess. You just knock them out, and now they're somewhere else. And this goes on for like two-thirds of the movie. I was bored out of my fucking mind. As I was watching this movie, reflecting back to the Transformers movies that I really loathe, like Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and the fourth one. I can't remember. What's it called? Anyhow, those are the two Transformers movies I consider the worst, and I was just like, at least they attempted to have a story. This is just action nonsense shit just on the screen for the sake of, well, people like that, right? Problem is, we live in this technological wonderland where we have something called the internet, where if we just want to watch an action sequence, we can watch one on YouTube. We just YouTube action sequence for shits and giggles. Boom. And now you're watching an action sequence. That shouldn't be enough for people to buy tickets to go to the movie theater. You need characters and story. You need something in there with it, man. Granted, this movie attempts to have a story by the end, you see the attempt actually poke its head out, but it is too little too late at that point, man. I'm just saying. And this concept of just being action nonsense for the sake of action nonsense would only be irritating if it were, oh my god. You have not seen shaky cam action nonsense until you've seen it on the big screen in IMAX 3D, folks. Bring the migraine pills. A big one's coming. Trust me. You can't see what's happening. Not only is it shaky cam, you can't see shit, but it's just jump cut. Is it? All right, I know. I use jump cuts in my YouTube videos. Yeah, if I'm talking about a movie, I use jump cuts. So fucking what? It's fine if someone's talking. If it's an action sequence in 3D, it hurts. And again, maybe my jump cuts hurt you. I'm sorry. If that's the case, I apologize. In the meantime, enjoy the free content. Seriously, at a point, Alice and something else, they were fist fighting, and I was just counting the cuts, and I was like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can just literally count the edits, and I'm like, you can't see shit. There were a couple times someone died, and I was like, I don't even know who died. I'm gonna have to see the next scene where they're all standing around and find out who's not there so I can assess who died. Probably not the approach the movie wants to take. I'm just saying, it's not. Like I said, the last third, it's like the movie started to go, okay, guys, we really gotta try. I mean, the studio wants us to at least try. And so you see an attempt and really in the last tenth of the movie, you can be like, hey, that's them trying, but it ain't enough, man. It's just by then I checked out. There's a part of me that's like, you know, this might be the best Resident Evil ever because it's over now. Part of me that just wants to give it awesome tacular because it signifies transcendence. We're, we're going somewhere else now. I don't have to do this anymore. I found this to be a movie built on the brick and mortar of just jump cut, shoddy ass, shaky cam, action scene nonsense that was just, I couldn't see what was happening. And I had a headache by the first quarter of the movie. It's like everyone was like, nah, the, the stories aren't working out. Let's just have shit happen. And yeah, that should be the tagline on the poster. Resident Evil, the final chapter. Shit happens. In fact, dog shit happens. I'm glad it's done. I'm glad it's over. Bury it in the ground. Good riddance. All right guys, so Resident Evil, the final chapter. Have you seen, what did you think about it? Or what's your favorite? or least favorite, or both, Resident Evil movies throughout all of them. Whatever they are, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. It's fucking over.